Hi, I'm Sankhita and welcome to SK Productions video editing series. In this Adobe Premiere Pro's lesson, I will show you how to add footage or video clip from source monitor to the timeline. Also, I will explain the different features that you see on the timeline so that you will have better understanding of their usages. In the previous lesson, we talked about how to create a sequence and proper sequence settings for Full HD video, USD and True 4K videos. We also created presets for them. If you missed that lesson, then I have put a link below in the description. So now I have demo sequence open on the timeline. Let's add footage or video clip to our sequence. When you double click on media file, it opens in source monitor. You can hit play to see all the footage or you can just scrub through it. You can add this whole clip to the sequence. For that, just click on it and drag and drop it to the timeline. It will ask you whether you want to change sequence to match the clip settings. Click on Clip Existing Settings because we don't want to change our sequence settings. If you would like to add any particular shot to your sequence, then simply hit I on the keyboard for mark in at the beginning of that shot and at the end of that shot, hit O on the keyboard for mark out. Now, you see here, this portion of the clip is selected. Then, you can just drag and drop it to the timeline. That's easy, right? Now, let's select another shot and add it to the timeline. Go to Source Monitor. Hit I on the keyboard for mark in. And hit O on the keyboard for mark out. Then simply drag and drop that clip to the timeline. But if you want to add only video clip without audio, then you can select the clip and then click on this icon that says drag video only. Drag and drop it to the timeline. You see only video clip is added to the timeline. Same for the audio clip. If you only want to add the audio of this clip, then click on this icon which says drag audio only, drag and drop it to the timeline. You can see only the audio of that clip here. Now notice one thing here, when you double click on the footage file, you can see it on source monitor. Just like that, whatever you have on the timeline, you can see it on the program monitor. This is called playhead. When you move the playhead, the footage that you have on the timeline at that playhead position, we can see that exact footage on the program monitor. Now let's take a look at the timeline. This is the video part and this is the audio part. See here, V1, V2, V3, these are the video tracks and these A1, A2, A3 are the audio tracks. If you want to make the video track bigger, then simply move this line up. That way you will be able to see the thumbnails of these video clips. Same for the audio track. You can just move this line down to make it bigger and you will be able to see it clearly. Another way to do it is by double clicking on that track. Double clicking once will make it bigger. Double clicking again will reset it to its original size. And with this bar, you can zoom in or zoom out to the timeline. Also, you can move right or left of the timeline. Now, see here this M in front of the audio tracks? When you click on it, it will look highlighted. That means that track is mute. You won't be able to hear anything on that track. Same for the video track. See here this eye icon? If I click on it, it will make that track disabled and you won't be able to see whatever is on that track. See on this program monitor? It's just showing black because the track is disabled. And when you move here, you can see footage here because it's on video track 2. To enable that video track again, simply just click on that eye icon again. You see S here? It says solo track. That means if you click on it, you will be only able to hear whatever is on that track, nothing else. See, you can hear this music. 
but you won't be able to hear this audio. This feature is very useful when there is a lot going on on your timeline. For example, I have the sequence, it's my previous tutorial video. Here you see I have voiceover, background music and intro music on different audio tracks. So if I want to listen to my voiceover only, I can make it solo and listen to it. Here you can see the most recent project that you have worked on. On your left hand side you will see these two main options. And with this you can lock any track so that you won't accidentally move it or make any changes to it. For example, let's lock this music track. Now when I press Ctrl A to select all the tracks, notice that all tracks are selected except the music track. You won't be able to move it or make any changes to it because it's locked now. You can add more tracks or delete tracks from the timeline. Just right click here, click on add tracks, this window will pop up. You can add video tracks or audio tracks here. Hit OK. And you see more tracks added to your timeline. If you want to delete empty tracks, then right click here, click on delete tracks. This window will pop up. From this drop down menu, you can select any track which you want to delete or you can select all empty tracks. Check this box if you want to delete video tracks. Then hit OK. And you see all empty tracks are deleted. Now let's look at here. This time indicates your playhead position. It shows in hours, minutes, seconds and frames. See if you move your playhead, the time is changing. If you hover to this button, it says insert or override sequences as nest or individual clips. Let me show you what it means. I have nested clip here. When I bring this nested clip to the timeline, it will come as a nested clip. See this green color? It indicates that it's a nested clip. But if you deactivate this button and bring this nested clip to the timeline, it will show you individual clips. Now, this button is a snap in timeline button. This is a very useful feature and you should keep it activated. What it does is, when you insert a clip, it snaps at the end of the previous clip and not overwrite it. Look at this action. If you deactivate this button, then when you try to insert the clip, it will overwrite the previous clip. So keep this activated. This one is linked selection button. See here, this video and its audio are linked together. That means they will move together. If you click on it, it will select as a one clip. But if you deactivate this button, then you can select video clip and audio clip separately. You can move them separately. So unless you want to do that, keep this button activated. With this one, you can add marker to your clips. For example, suppose you have a problem with audio here and you want to change it later. So you can put a note here saying change this audio. Let me show you how you can do that. Let's your play here where you want to put marker. Deselect the clip, then click here. See, this marker is added to your timeline. Double click on it. This window will open. You can put your note here. Change audio. Select the duration. You can change the color. I will select red. Hit OK. You can see your marker here. You can adjust its duration. And when you zoom in, you will be able to read the note. This way you can easily recognize that something needs to be done here. You can zoom in and read your note. And this one is timeline display settings. 
With this one, you can add or remove any feature to your timeline. Let's click on this show audio names. And see here, now it's showing the audio clip name here. That's it for now. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask them in the comments below. In the next lesson, we will discuss more about the toolbar and their usages. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your comments below. I have more video editing tutorials on my channel that you can follow. Bye for now. See you next time.